What's going on everybody? How's it going? Today, we're gonna have a full guide for a game known as Contractor's Showdown that just released into its first open beta. Now previously, it's just been me and the boys here chilling on this oil rig, but we're gonna be having a full guide today so that way you know exactly how to play this game. I'm gonna be leaving in some stuff that kind of explains how the game works, the mechanics, what you're supposed to do in here and how the game operates, as well as tips and tricks to help you actually survive out there so you know everything and you don't feel like you're at a disadvantage from those of us like myself who have had access to the closed beta and the closed alpha. And for your convenience, everything will be time stamped down at the bottom of the video so you can scroll along and be like, oh, I don't wanna have to see stuff on movement, I don't wanna have to see gun stuff, blah, blah, blah. All of it will be time stamped down there to make sure that I don't waste any of your time. So let me go and give you the short version of what exactly Contractor Showdown is. It is a battle royale where 60 people spawn into a massive map that is four kilometers, four times bigger than the map inside Population 1. It has a zone that moves in different ways, enclosing everybody together, forcing everybody to a single point to be the last squad standing. No, oh, that guy got to live on that one. Going into different towns, different houses, all that stuff, you'll be able to find a bunch of different guns, attachments, and other things along the way like throwables. There's also money inside the game, and there's also things like medical supplies with bandages, health syringes, armor plates, and some other tactical items that we'll go through later, as well as extensions for things like inventory, ammo, and vest upgrades. So yeah, it's just a massive map that everybody gets to spawn in at, and you go around, collect stuff, and make sure you're the last squad standing. Very simple battle royale mechanics. Now let's go over the movement inside the game because there is some subtle tricks that most people don't seem to know about whenever they're using some of the movement inside the game. The basics obviously is being able to sprint and then there also is a jump when you click in on your right thumbstick and there's also a slide. So if I sprint forward and flick down on my right joystick, it allows me to slide letting me get into cover. So if somebody's over there and I need to quickly get into cover, I can slide behind this station right here. There also is a vaulting mechanic. It's not on every surface, but you can actually vault over certain surfaces that have been coded in for vaulting inside the game. So for example, I can go over here. It says grip to vault. It has an arrow pointing that way. So then I just grip with my grip button and I pull myself forward and I'm over that surface now. However, not all surfaces have been able to be vaulted over. I'm not exactly sure if this is intentional or if it's that the developers have to actually add the vaulting onto the individual assets inside the game. They're working on it, but for things like this, for instance, it seems like it should be a height where I can vault over it, but I can't. And yes, there also are climbable ladders on certain parts inside the game. Now this one is one of the cooler movement mechanics known as the zipline, and there's actually two ways you can utilize this zipline. So if you hold the zipline where it says grip, you just go right up and it places you right at the top of the zipline. That's the first way to use it. However, there is a way you can actually try to fly further with it. So if you hold it, like how you got up to the top there, it places you at the top. So if there's people, you know, maybe at a distance away from the zipline, you can hold it to get up there to stay right at the zipline because you're like, ooh, I don't want to fly up in the air and let them see me. But if you want to go far up, like how you saw me in the intro, you just hold onto this and then pull down, just do a pull down mechanic like that, the exact second that you're about to fall off and it'll make you go further. And depending on how you do it, you can actually go further than that. I've actually managed to get quite some distance by just yoinking myself upwards like that. And just, ugh, like that. It takes a little bit of practice to try to get it exactly right, but if you can utilize that anytime they're out there on a zip line, it, you can go pretty far. And I'll show you some redeploy stations when we get out there that utilize the zip line mechanic. And the last one is the parachute. If you're up in the sky for a certain number of seconds, those two little orange handles will appear, and you can uh, extend out your right hand and pull your left in to go left, or the opposite to go right. If you try to put both your hands really close to your face, it'll make you go really slow. You can see how slow I'm going right here, but if I, and then this will be about normal speed, just extending your hands out normal, And but if I try to stretch out my hands to push forward as far as I can, you can see how fast I'm going. So the further out you extend your hands like this, the faster and further you'll fly. Now here's the five different types of guns they added into the game. Rifles, pistols, SMGs, snipers, and shotguns all use the same type of ammo, so of course if you pick up any sniper rounds, it's gonna go for all these guns, etc. The rifles here all handle the same to an extent. I'd say the XM5 handles the best out of all the guns, but all of them do pretty much comparable fire rates. You're gonna see maybe around 10 points of damage difference per gun. I've noticed that the AK Alpha actually does the most damage out of all of them, but it seems like the XM5 has the most control and best fire rate. 
With the pistols, I'm not really even gonna bother to go into these. To be completely honest, I have never even seen anybody get a kill with a pistol unless it was somebody that absolutely had to get a kill with a pistol. Most people just avoid using these in general. For the SMGs, all of them have pretty much the same kind of recoil and fire rate, but the CZ EVO 3 actually does the most damage out of these three guns. For these three semi-automatic snipers right here on the left, the RFB surprisingly does the most damage but the MK17 has better control if you're trying to pop a target multiple times very quickly. And these are the two more common bolt action sniper rifles. Between the two of them, the CAR-98 does around 20% more damage, so you're not really gonna be missing much in case you can only find an M40. The rarest of all the snipers though is right here, the Intervention. Now it only does 30 points more damage than the CAR-98 for the body shots, but the headshots with the Intervention, if you can manage to get a headshot, can actually one-tap somebody. If you'll notice my left indicator right over here, my health is the white bar and those plates are the yellow bars. So if I manage to get three plates after my vest extension, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, I can manage to get 250, the health is 100, and there's 50 per armor plate. But the intervention headshot can actually get 317 damage. Oh, excuse me, 318. <laughs> And between the shotguns right here, we have the S686, which is the double barrel shotgun, and the Origin 12, which is the semi-automatic. Now, between the two of these, the double barrel actually does double the damage of the Origin 12. But of course, you're only going to get two shots with this because it is a double barrel. However, it is extremely satisfying to get those double barrel kills if you manage to get it. I've cut around corners before and managed to actually two-tap people with this double barrel, so it is effective if you can hit your shots. For mid-range combat, though, because of the recent Origin buff, you can actually just laser somebody just by hitting them multiple times with the Origin. Sorry about all the littering with the gun testing that I was doing, but long story short, you guys have your own personal preference on what you want to do. I recommend just dropping into the war zone, trying to pick up any kind of guns that you see, and just testing them out. You'll notice that there are damage differences and handling differences with all the guns, but they're pretty minimal as long as you have your preference of gun. So like for me, for instance, I typically don't even use ARs. I'll try to go with a bolt action sniper rifle for long range, and then for short range, I'll try to get the double barrel or the Origin 12. So I have that nice mix of long and short range. Because yes, when you're going into the war zone, you can hold two guns on your body. Next is the throwables and the new throwing mechanic. Every single throwable has a five second timer before it's about to detonate. So you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, boom. And it's the same with all of them. However, trying to time it is what's key. Typically with grenades, you can throw it a little bit later than what you intended to try to get it to land right on the target. But with the rest of the throwables, you're gonna wanna throw them a little bit earlier. Of course, you just saw that we have grenades, classic. There's also a smoke grenade that you can use. Might take a second to activate. Yep, and you can see the smoke is instantaneous, creates a giant smoke cloud. And of course, what game would be complete without a classic flashbang? Oh, why'd I do that? And then right here, we've got a detection grenade. So whenever I throw it, pull the pin, toss it somewhere. Whenever there's an enemy within this blue radius that will show up and puts a red indicator above his head for about five seconds. And then we have the radiation grenade. This is an AOE device that's actually really useful for if somebody's trying to camp inside of a building. You just throw it right there and it does damage over time, similar to the storm that's pushing everybody in towards the center in the battle royale style. And there is a leveling system inside this game that gives you cosmetics as well as perks. So for example, on the perks, you can see right over here, there's a bunch of different perks that you can choose from. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them with all of you, but there is a lot of useful things you can get out of all of them. You can do things like Tycoon to be able to enter the match with $3,000 to be able to buy things, which I'll show you later on. You can enter in with some armor plates and bandages, increase your running speed, increase the duration of your stamina, being able to mark enemies after you shoot them, things like your stamina refreshing when you get shot by enemies, and a lot of other useful perks you can use along the way. Unfortunately, the servers are down right now, so you won't be able to see all of the stuff that I have, but typically I'll go for the Grenadier perk so I can have more things to throw at people like I showed you all those throwables. I will use the Iron Lung to be able to increase my stamina, and then I'll use Nerve Reflection to be able to refresh my sprint whenever I get shot at so I can get out of any kind of wild situations. To be able to unlock perks like that, you can actually complete contracts. So you'll have daily contracts here, and there is a way to unlock other contracts like I'll show you in a little bit. Whenever you complete a contract, you can get regular XP like this, and you can also get chips to be able to decode inside your base. The chips that you can get right here, you can either get from doing the contracts, or you can actually find these chips inside your game while you're playing, and I'll show you how that system works later on with obtaining the chips when we actually get into the rounds. But, for instance, right now, you can do the common one right here. 
and right there I just unlocked a skin for my character so I can actually put on a new skin. And then right there after opening up another one we got a common spray and then now we also have a pendant and I'll be able to show you guys these cosmetics in a little bit. Opening up some of the rare ones we're getting some more liveries and we can also get gun skins as well as the liveries themselves. And you can also get contracts from these as well so it kind of it's a system that feeds into itself to help you level up. You can unlock these chips and get really good high paying contracts and whenever you complete it gives you a bunch of XP. And then right here opening up you also get RP which is basically this game's level of you know XP. Whenever you get RP you can actually use that towards these blueprints over here. So whenever you open up one of these cards instead of it just giving you one thing it gives you a blueprint to unlock multiple things using your RP. So like right here this one costs 5 RP. I currently have 240. I can click craft and now I have a new player card that I unlocked through the RP. To quickly go through some of the base customizations, you can customize this device right here in your center chest that I'll explain in a little bit with any of these customizations. You can actually unlock a whole bunch of different character skins, and you can also equip a whole bunch of different player cards like right here. So whenever you kill somebody, it'll have your name right here. Uh, it shows my ID right now because the servers are messing up since it is transitioning into the open beta, but you'll have your name right here, and it'll show your profile picture right there with your player card whenever you kill somebody. Or it can show your player card right here on the right because this is a team game. You can team up with you and up to two of your friends in squads of three. Now you can tell me that I'm wrong, but I think that these cosmetics are some of the best I've seen in any VR game as far as their customizability. So first off, you can have a weapon skin. They have a lot of really amazing weapon skins in here, but on top of you just getting to have a weapon skin, you can also combine it with a livery. So for instance, right here, I can put the Fury Unleashed, and then I can put the Snow Blind on here to be able to change certain color aesthetics of the livery to be able to combine the two. And then on top of that, I can also add a gun pendant on here, and the gun pendant has its own independent physics whenever you're firing the gun and moving the gun around. Which I know is very minor to some people, but I think that's really cool because I've yet to see a VR game do this appropriately. But this is actually the most important part of the cosmetics, and that's you can actually change the aesthetic of the cosmetics for your combat. And all of it changes depending on your preferences on your individual profile. So, for example, right over here, if I'm like, hey, I have this red dot site here, but eh, I don't really like the default look of the red dot. I want to be able to have a Romeo 8T site. So I equip it on there, and now anytime I load into the game, no matter what instance I load into, as long as this is saved on my profile when I unlock this site, if I take a reflex site and put it on top of an AK Alpha, it will immediately transform into this specific site. Most of the stuff on here is aesthetic based. So like for instance, the compensators all do the exact same thing with reducing the recoil the same way. It's not going to change the performance of the guns necessarily. But if for example, you're like, hey, I want to be able to have this specific aim point one site on my HK, but I want to have the Romeo site over here, on my, oh, excuse me, on my AK Alpha, then there you go. All the stuff for your cosmetics will change in real time every time you pick up a gun inside the game. Now let's go ahead and drop it in the war zone so I can actually show you how this game works. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to use your center chest device known as the Mika to be able to determine where you wanna drop in at. So there's a lot of different areas. You've got hot spots like industrial. You've got a little bit more quiet places like being able to go to the Hyder Ranch over there. Or you could go to places like Old Town, a bunch of different spots all over this massive four square kilometer map. But one of the most common places that I can actually help you guys out learn this game is over in Old Town. So let's jump out and get in. Also a little side tip as you're actually going through this, the airplane does give you a little bit of a shove as you fly out of it, so you want to use that momentum to try to push yourself forward in a certain direction and then use this parachute to more so guide you towards it. You don't want to hold it down the entire time, more or less just let yourself fall, kind of go at a diagonal angle where you're occasionally using your parachute as well as the natural gravity. Now the Mika is going to be very useful for any kind of situation and I'm going to show you right here how you can do it for things like vendors, using tactical equipment, as well as even help you find items. So for example, right now we're in Old Town. Normally I would be doing this while I'm up in the sky, but I wanted to kind of show you guys down here to kind of ease you into it. So if I take the Mika, I hold it out. You can see right here it says Old Town mid-tier loot. All the places have randomized loot. So this one right here just happened to have mid-tier loot. So it's got one gun crate, two medical crates, and one money crate. 
So for example, after pulling this out, I can see what types of crates that are here, as well as go over to here, and I can see that there is a money crate. Oh, my bad. I can see that there is a money crate right over here. Walk over to it, opens it up, and there is a bunch of cash inside here that I can grab. Also, you can see right here, there is an NPC that is being very annoying to my recording, and I'm going to promptly take care of him. And the NPCs will either drop money or a self-revive, so whenever I'm down, I can use that to be able to get myself back up. Like this self-revive right here. Oh, he's got a friend. Hold on a second. Sir, you're messing up my recording. Sir, stop that. Okay, there we go. Now, we've got the self-revive right here. Whenever I'm down, it'll have a little self-revive in front of me where I can grab it and inject myself with it while I'm down and bring myself back into the fight. And just to show you another example, here is a gun crate. Typically, a gun crate will spawn in with something like an AR or a sniper. It'll have some kind of attachment like a foregrip, and then it'll have one of these devices right here that you can put inside your Mika. And you also see these crates around the map. Whenever you pull your Mika, it'll have this little blue indicator above it, and you can also see it if you zoom in right here a little crate indicator these are randomized airdrops that can drop anywhere on the map it's pretty standard with these crates most of the time they'll give you these four armor plates they'll give you a gun ammo box and they'll give you a device for your mika along with a cosmetic ship and if you pull out your mika device and press the trigger you can actually enlarge the map to different types of zooms as well see so and you can also see right here all the different types of vendors you can see some redeploys that we'll experiment with here in a second and you can see other indicators like for instance these red circles whenever there is a red circle there it typically means that there's going to be npcs spawning over there the larger the red circle the more npcs that are going to be in that area you can also click the trigger to enlarge the map to be able to be like oh i want to tell my teammates i'm going to go all the way over here towards the beach in old town boom you can mark it right there even when you can't see it or if something's directly in front of you, you just tilt this little boy up like this press the trigger and you can mark places directly in front of you or in case you're like hey i don't want to have to pull out this device every single time to paying a location in front of me you can actually just put your hand to your head pull the trigger and as soon as you let go it'll have that exact same indicator in front of you just by moving around this and letting go of the trigger and right before we get into our first vendor i did show you guys the chips earlier this is how you use the chip you grab it right here put it inside your mika device where it says insert and then you'll see a number indicator right there as soon as it gets to 100 it will actually send this chip to your safe house and then you can use it to decode and it will give you the cosmetics the contracts the xp all that stuff that we talked about earlier and one of the more interesting parts about this is that it prevents people from going into these games that just want to be able to go and collect cosmetics and only do that so if you're trying to collect the cosmetics and you're hiding out in the storm just healing and trying to collect cosmetics it actually stops the progress on the upload until you're out of the storm and with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into our first vendor right here, the Prime Vendor, which will always be indicated by the purple. You can use it to buy medical supplies, tactical items, extended mags, and advanced gear. So, for the advanced gear, you can get a backpack upgrade and a vest upgrade. You'll see right here, that's where the vest upgrade goes, right? That's where the backpack upgrade goes. Whenever you use the vest upgrade, put it in, and now you'll see I have three slots right there to be able to put in plates for my armor plates. Then you take the backpack upgrade, do the same, and it took those three spots that were locked on the bottom of the backpack, and now I can have three more items to be able to put inside my backpack. And there's only three extended mags right here for right now, but I'm assuming they'll probably try to add in more later, whenever they add in new classifications of guns. I mean, let's be honest here, if I could put a shotgun extension on and somehow have a cursed triple barrel, I would absolutely do that. Sometimes these upgrades do mess up a little bit for the extended mags, but a surefire way to make sure that you always get the upgrade is to take it, slowly put it into your chest like that, if you just insert it with the picture upwards, it typically works best. Now we can use some of these medical items because that NPC actually hurt me quite a bit. And you'll see as soon as I pick up all those medical items, they're actually on my right right here and I can rotate through them by pressing A. So I see right here, oh, I need to play it up. Just grab it, slide it to the left, and then boom, I've played it up with my three armor plates. As a reminder, your health goes to 100 and your plates go to a total of 150, giving you a total protection of 250 before you die. Now the bandages, all you do is just take it, put it on your left wrist, rotate it, and it will slowly bring up your health over time. And these are stackable, so I can put on multiple bandages, and they will all tick in their own independent intervals to bring up my health. Or you can use a medical syringe by putting it in your chest or on your wrist, 
holding down the trigger. It takes about three seconds to activate, to actually insert the syringe, and it takes another second or two for the health to start actually flowing through. So, you can see right there, the health went up extremely fast. However, it doesn't last as long as the bandages. So, you can either stack up a bunch of bandages in case you're trying to live in the storm for a certain period of time, or if the storm's doing a lot of damage, or if you're like, hey, I don't want to have to spend four bandages or five bandages to get back to full health, just use one medical syringe. And lastly, we have the tactical items. Now, a very important thing to note here is that all of them are indicated by these triangles on them. So, you can see right here, this one has three triangles. So it's going to immediately go into the three triangle spot there. This one has two triangles, so it's going to go in the two triangle spot in the middle. This one, however, has the one triangle. And you can see right here, we picked up that cluster bomb earlier. So if we pick it up, put it inside there, it has now deleted our cluster bomb. There's no way to get it back. It's going to be a waste of resources if you don't pay attention to what upgrades you're grabbing. With the barricades, you can place up to two of them to use the entire barricade device. And you can see right here, they're pretty sturdy as far as trying to get through the barricades. However, don't think that this is just some impenetrable wall because you can actually vault over them. And then you've got the decoys. You can place up to three different decoys to use the entire device. And then you can see by this indicator that the developers have given me too much power. Nothing actually happens whenever you shoot these decoys. You pretty much just pass right through them. However, if you're getting sniped at from a distance and you can actually put this one directly over some sort of barricade, somebody might be able to try to snipe it and say like, oh, I'm gonna get a headshot on this guy just because they can barely see the top of the person's head and not realize that it's not a person. Some of these decoys have actually saved my life once or twice whenever I'm trying to hide over in a corner and an enemy knows that I'm there and is about to rush me. I take the decoy, place it on a corner, and then immediately they rush around, shoot the first closest thing that they see, which is the decoy, and then I'm able to shoot them from a different angle. And then right here we have a detection, which is like a larger version of the detection grenade that we indicated earlier. So that little blue circle just went off, and there's no red markers indicating that there's no enemies near me. However, that's not always entirely true because they could get past it using a detection jammer. Now, anytime that you have a detection jammer on, this is more of a passive item. So you can see right there the three bars, it has three uses. Whenever somebody uses a detection on you, or a detection grenade, it takes away one of those uses, and you don't get detected at all. The detection jammer is extremely useful in small circle scenarios. So, if the circle is getting very, very small, and you're like, hey, I want to make sure that some enemy isn't just going to pull a trigger, and all of a sudden they know exactly where I'm at and rush me, put on this detection jammer. I've seen so many people just rely on the detection to just do the thinking for them. They hit the detection and they're like, oh, I must be safe. And they start lollygagging around, looting to their heart's content, and sneak up behind them and blast them with a shotgun. World War II had just happened. Oh, Hello. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, right here, you've got the airstrike. So you can either indicate it like this or flip it over. Just put it exactly where you want to, like that. Call it in. Takes a couple seconds to activate, and then... Now that's pretty cool. However, the main thing that I want to warn you about is that this is more of a ground explosion rather than a quote-unquote airstrike. So, for example, there's been some people that have just been crowded around over here and have been able to put an airstrike on them, and they just take the zip line up. And even though technically the airstrike should be coming from the top down on top of them, they're able to just go up the zip line without getting damaged at all, just as long as they're not on the ground level. So, don't take that as in like, oh, as soon as you are anywhere within that vicinity, you're just gonna die, even if you're going straight up. It's not always the case. However, it does work inside buildings. So, if I put an airstrike inside that building, the airstrike's gonna come on top of the roof. It just doesn't come all the way from the sky limit, more or less. It is also important to know that most things in here have a stock limit. So, for example, you can see that I maxed out the decoy on my, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> attempt at a joke earlier, and now I can't buy any more decoys. And right here is the red vendor, which is known as the munitions vendor, and here you can buy anything lethal. So through here you can buy the grenades, the detection grenades, and the radiation grenades. You can also get the four different types of ammo, which I forgot to mention earlier, the SMG and pistol ammo is actually lumped into one. You can also buy the BX-4, the Origin-12, the AK-Alpha, the HK-416, and the MK-17. And then you can also get attachments like reflexes, lasers, compensators, silencers, foregrips, and different types of other sights. And yes, all these do change in real time depending on what you have on your gun. So if you remember earlier, I put the specialty red dot sight on my AK, I take this regular reflex, put it on there, and boom, it changed it to exactly the red dot sight that I had whenever I customized it in the main lobby area. 
And there are also a lot of zip lines around the map like I talked about in the movement section of the video. And this is one of the more useful ones known as a redeploy station. You can see it indicated by the balloons up there. If you pull out your map, you can actually see that it's marked just like how all the stations are marked by this little green up arrow indicator. And it's also on your map like that. So you can see right here, if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see that indicator right there of the redeploy station. Basically all you do is just grab it and go right up and just like the ones I told you about in the movement tutorial, if you yank yourself up at just the right moment, you can fling yourself up past where you're supposed to be able to go. Because if you just ride it all the way up, it does give you a good little boost, but not as much as you being able to do it yourself. And lastly, this is arguably one of the most important stations inside this game, the insurance station. Now they just changed over these numbers, so these won't be entirely accurate. This 1,000 is going to turn into 3,000, and this 3,000 is going to turn into 6,000. But the implications of the insurance are still the same, that you get to be able to come back to life if you die. With the basic insurance, you come back with only a Makarov, and with the advanced insurance, you come back with an AK. I have not seen any indication on whether or not there is a difference on time as far as when the insurance actually expires. Both of them are pretty much the same, the only difference being that one of them is an AK and one of them is a Makarov. Which, if you died and you lost all of your stuff, it's probably a better bet to go with the AK to try to survive a little bit longer until you can get some more loot. However, like I said a second ago, this insurance actually does expire. So, whenever the zone is closing in, let me get to that. Whenever the zone is closing in and it gets to the second to last circle, all insurance expires no matter when you bought it. You could buy it and then five seconds later the zone closes into the second to last one and then boom, your insurance expires. So make sure you pay attention to what round the zone is on so you know when your insurance is going to expire. Because as soon as it expires, it's basically like you never bought it. If you died right now on zone two, I'd be able to spawn back in with my Makarov or my AK, depending on which one I bought. I would just spawn at the sky limit and be able to fly back down into the war zone, try to find some more loot, get back into the fight. But if it's the second to last zone, then I just lose everything. I will die and there's no way to come back to life unless one of my teammates can somehow buy me back which is also a system that's on here. Right now, I'm queued up alone, obviously, so I don't have any teammates to be able to show you the example, but normally these two are shoved more to the right, and on the left, it'll have two different names on here of whoever my two teammates are, and I can click to be able to buy them back. And being able to buy them back right now, it's 2,500 to be able to buy them back. But only for the first life. As soon as somebody dies again, the price increases by 2,000 each time. And lastly, I did want to give you some map recommendations in case you're wondering where to be able to go inside this entire zone. Night Town has pretty decent loot and is pretty underpopulated. Old Town is very popular, but does have some pretty good loot most of the time. With Hyder Town and Hyder Ranch, you've got a 50-50 chance of somebody actually popping into Ranch. Almost all the time, you'll have somebody pop into Hyder Town but this place actually has really good loot with the lack of people that drop over there. Hardly anybody really goes to Radar Station specifically, but one of the hot spots inside Radar Station is right underneath it known as Black Market. It's a little area with a broken down plane and all that. There's a lot of people that like to drop there. Hardly anybody ever goes to Lumberjacks or Crash Site, which is understandable. It really doesn't have good loot. Every single time I've gone over there, I have almost never found good guns. Seahorn Town and Bridgehead Town are normally ones that get pushed to at the very end. The zone will close in towards those towns, but I've never really seen people drop in there off the bat. The loot over there is good, but not the best. Outlaw's Den and Clifton, you hardly ever see anybody drop over there ever, but the loot over there is pretty decent. Relic Ruins can be a pretty hot spot depending on where the plane is going to go in, and if the plane is flying over Coot's Graveyard, you'll most likely see people go over there too. These two areas have amazing loot. And Industrial right here that we're actually standing in is the hottest spot inside here. Almost every time you drop here, you will see probably at least two other teams dropping in somewhere around here. Where I'm actually standing at is the hottest spot inside this entire map. Almost every single time that I've dropped here, I've had to fight people within the first 20 seconds of dropping in right here. Of course, the loot over here all the time is randomized, so anything could change at any moment depending on the spawn rates, but that's just my general map knowledge of what I wanted to indicate to all of you with my experience inside this game from the closed alpha all the way up until now. 
All the guns inside the game are also subject to change, like I talked about, some do more damage, some have better handling, etc. But I did want to give you guys some indications on what you can expect going into here, day one. For those of you that got to get in this amazing open beta, this early. You're going to have an amazing time in here. I love all of you for watching this video. And if you have any other questions, please leave it down in the comments below. I'm going to try to help you out as best I can. And obviously this is made by the same people who made the amazing VR FPS game Contractors, one of my favorite overall FPS games. And you can get it for 70% off using this code on the screen on the Meta Quest store. Not a promo and I don't even get any commission from it, but I got to say this is turning into one of my favorite games. Regular Contractors was already my favorite game. These developers are amazing. I love whenever they give me an opportunity to be able to push this stuff out here to all of you guys. As you play this game more, you'll be attuned to more of the map locations, get more comfortable with the game, and overall have a lot more fun. But with all that being said, I hope that you, 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 and most importantly, you have a phenomenal day, and I hope to see you in the next one. Let me know what other types of tutorials you'd like to see. Peace out. Oh, God.